I've heard everybody. I'm still just in jail. <laughs> you don't actually have to be in jail trouble. This isn't how D&D works. I, I'm a method actor. <laughs> All I'm saying is the next time Destel needs like 10 or 15 more seconds, one of you <laughs> speak up and just. And don't Gus. get thrown in jail and you'll do better. <laughs> late that evening, like very late. Uh, so by this point, you're mostly sobered up. They have brought you some kind of broth and. Uh, a hard crust of bread. Make an insight check. Insight is... Yep. So that's a ten. Ten? They bring you your broth. It's got a just a bite of potato and a couple of chunks of meat in it. And a piece crust of hard bread. You hear voices coming from up the stairs. You hear a woman's voice. Uh, what's your passive perception? Eleven. You just hear the voice. You can't make out what's being said. But eventually you do recognize Caitlin Chubb marching down the stairs along with one of the moss caps. Uh, the man who uh, Seeker spoke to much earlier in the day. And you figure it's it has to be past his shift by now. But for some reason he's the one standing at the base of the stairs... He's crossed his arm over, kind of leaning half on the wall, half on his pike. Caitlin Chubb walks up. She looks very, very unhappy. I shrug at her. So they give you the sponsorship you asked for, and you immediately run all over town, throwing magic around now that you have the legal means to do so. No, I was attacked by two armed men and I used the shield spell. She holds up her hand, coaxes your explanation down. Maybe you have misinterpreted our relationship, but I'm not your auntie, I'm not your grandmother, and I'm not here to pamper your bottom. Very, very clear. What's in for me if I tell these people that you are that I indeed sponsored you for the Cobblestone Wizards. I could tell, you, tell them I've never seen you before in my life, that you're lying about the sponsorship and they would treat you accordingly. So as I see it, how the crown treats you from here, despite whatever your transgressions might be, rests on what I tell them. Gus looks very upset at this because, like... I didn't take you for that kind of person. Did you tell her that? Yeah. She says she is an opportunist above all else. You have to be in her line of work. I currently have nothing to give you. I am entirely at your mercy at this moment. She tells you she's not asking for your prison rags, but she knows that you're a member of Flump Inc. And she knows that you are, all five of you, magicians of some level of caliber. Yes. So what can you offer her? Like, I... What would you like? Like, I, I don't... I don't have much, even in the way of, like, I don't think my hammer would make you happy. It's just a normal hammer. And I cannot promise you anything that does not own, I do not own. She says she, she knows what you would, what she would accept. She takes out a scroll of parchment. She kind of sits cross-legged on the ground and spreads it over her legs and out of some of the folds of her robes she produces a, a quill and an inkwell. And you see her begin to scribble something down on the page. She tells you that your associate Seeker, the one who 
she has negotiated limited access to her spellbook. She knows that he's a diviner of some sort. The other three. What she wants is the specialty of magic practiced by your other three companions. And we've established that all five of you do know that the essential, like what your, what each other's classes are, where your magic comes from. So you, Gus would know that Florian is an onomancer, that mm -hmm. Lucius is a warlock, and that Alexander is an artificer. If you tell her this information, she says that she'll affirm that you are her sponsor, that you are a cobblestone wizard, and it is legal for you to use magic in the city of Dunfoss. Here's what I don't know that Gus knows. Mm -hmm. I don't know to what level Gus knows what those things mean. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know that Automancy has something to do with names, but the actual specifics of like how rare that sort of magic is or how powerful it can be. I'm not sure if Gus knows that. Same thing with Lucius's Warlock Pact or Alexander's gadgetry training. It would be... Uh... I think it probably would just be a basic understanding. Like, not in terms of, like... How powerful, like, Gus would probably have some idea, especially the onomancy, because of everybody's reaction, the, the, the Black Jacket's reactions. He mm -hmm. might have some inkling, but, like, no, nothing concrete. He, like, Gus is not going around and asking everybody, like, on a scale of 1 to 10, how dangerous is your capability? <laughs> so you would know for sure that Lucius, being a warlock, is sort of dangerous information. Especially nowadays when there are demon attacks in town. Uh-huh. Uh, evil cults slaughtering people. This flying pig nonsense going around. If that information got out, Lucius might be compromised in some way. Gus is probably cognizant of that. Right. So what do you tell her? Uh, you tell her... I'll tell her that I... Will not I says I'll give her anything that is that is mine to give, but that's not my information to give, and it would put my friends in danger, and therefore I would rather just go to prison. She corrects you. She says the knowledge in your head is yours and yours alone, and what you and it do with it is entirely your choice. If your associates have told you otherwise, they have lied to you, and they are misusing your talents. Gus shakes his head. No, he says if. I do not know what you're going to use this information for. She if says, it neither would, do I yet. If I if it is if there's any chance that it puts any of my friends in danger, I cannot give it to you. I will not give it to you. Make a persuasion check. Oh, well. See you guys later. I I'm going to uh, <laughs> uh, I guess I, I'm going to roll uh I'm going to roll up a monk. <laughs> no more of this magic bullshit. Uh, persuasion. That is a 17... Uh, 18. The She's... more you complain about how bad a persuasion roll is, the better it'll be. <laughs> yeah, it's true. <laughs> and what's your passive insight? It's like 6, 9, eight. 14? Eight. Okay, 8. 8. I, I, we can go with 14. Let's go with 14. <laughs> you said it, therefore it's spoken into existence. She seems to consider your words for a moment. And then she says, I've gone through all this trouble for you. Give me one of them. And I'm... Uh... I mean... Alexander, maybe? Thinking to myself, like, would Gus give up any of them? So, I mean, not for nothing, but Florian has no problems telling people how his magic works. Also, Florian's not there. <laughs> Trouble well, must I... make this decision alone. Alright. Alright, alright. Very well. 
I will keep my mouth shut. <laughs> I mean... I, I'll give her Alexander's because it's like it's like he's a artificer because he walks around with a six foot tall mechanical badger. Okay, that's sure he does. <laughs> she asks a couple of probing questions about his workshop. What sorts of materials does he work with? What sorts of objects does he create? Ja- Gus has no idea what's in his workshop. That's not true because we've established that. Uh, Alex knows that everybody knows about how much he works with lead specifically. He's always in there making acid every oh, night. Oh, well, yeah. All right, yeah. Well, the acid and the lead, yeah. <laughs> and the giant mechanical badger. You also his- know that Alex... Is a mechanical giant badger, not a giant mechanical badger? You also, also know that Alex- in addition to the various trinkets and gadgets you've seen him make, his primary form of weaponry is a firearm that doesn't use dragon powder. Oh, right. I was going to... My brain was still on crossbow. <laughs> yeah. Well. So do you tell her some or all of that information or none of it? I'll tell her one thing at the time. Okay. And so you... then I'll keep I'll keep quiet after every answer and to kind of, like, lead her into, like, going into the next thing. So I don't have to tell her more than I have to. The only other question she has is if you know where he received his his training in these arts. That I for sure don't know. Okay. As far as I know, Alexander is self-taught. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I don't go on about that all the time? <laughs> Listen, you talk about college, right? But you talk about random nonsense college courses. You took every elective under the sun, and I have no I I just don't listen to you when you talk about that. <laughs> Fair enough. I don't know. Is is like is is artificy one hundred and one? Is that an elective you took? It is one of his two degrees. Yes. <laughs> the other is Again. underwater basket weaving. <laughs> she rolls up the parchment, and she hollers back to the guard. Yeah, this is one of mine. I haven't known him to use his magic for impure purposes. It's my opinion that if he did cast spells, it was in defense of himself or another. The guard nod, seems satisfied. And then Caitlin Chubb leaves. Mm-hmm. And you have a cold, lonely night in the cell. All to yourself. Yeah. Nobody Gus, else comes to visit you. It's, it's fine. Take what? the quiet and just go to sleep. What's everybody else doing this evening? Uh, I'm going to go ahead and, unless it's my turn, I think it's Seeker's turn to look at the puzzle book, so I'm going to go ahead and interview another one of these guys. Uh, let's go yes, with Earl. Earl. Uh, hey, no, I, 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 I got I, I to gotta talk to you, Alexander. I got to talk to you about something. And okay. I, I, I feel like I'm, get, I'm getting in over my head here. <laughs> <laughs> Lucius will tell him what went down at 56 cards. It says, now I'm all for now I'm all for you know bringing justice to a person, but outright killing a man just over taking some money that 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 seems pretty dark and not at all what a fine upstanding citizen should do. So wait, what? Who are you? Who did they ask you to kill? A fellow by the name of Irvin Irving. He's been swindling people out of their money at fifty six cards through magic or. I think so, but I'm not sure. And what are they going to do if you don't kill him? I don't know, but he did give me two drops of this very clearly awful looking substance that I don't, that I wouldn't want to ingest on on the best of days. Lucius will take it out and show it to him. Hmm. Um. I mean, my understanding is how much money. I mean, there's no way the capital punishment is right for the amount of money he's taken. So I, I tend to agree with you. You probably don't want to just murder this person. Um, but that's going to get you in trouble because, boy, this. I mean, I have to run some tests, but I have a feeling this is some pretty. If this is what you're saying, it is. It's some pretty nasty stuff. Alex, looking yeah. in this vial, there's so little fluid in here 
that any yeah. test you run would effectively use right. the dose. Yeah, exactly. And that also means that there's it's so poisonous that that little of it can kill someone. Capital P poison. <laughs> yep. No safe. Yeah, but... I don't know what to do! No, wait, do. who... who, who uh, is it an organization or an individual that's trying to get you to commit this murder? It's... It's... Oliver. Maybe is that all, because... Is that Oswald? Maybe be Oswald, yeah, that's what I meant. Okay. Uh, yeah. That... Pretty sure Oswald yeah. has some underground connections, doesn't he? Well, I mean... I don't, were you at the barge? Were you there when we got after Drudolph? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I thought. Huh. Um. Well. I mean, my opinion would be to get this guy out of town, and uh, they said you want—they wanted you to give them a body, or leave the body. He said that that's how they handle things. Is is I'll, I do the deed. He he takes care of the body. Hmm. How do you feel about grave robbing? <laughs> that's not the next things that I thought was going to come out of your mouth. But maybe so I we, should look. If we can get some, a corpse out of the morgue, we can throw a bunch of acid over it. We can get this guy out of town, and we can leave the corpse there. And if it comes to it, you just say, oh, yeah, something went wrong, and I had to magic some acid onto him. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I think getting run out of town for, for, for stealing some money out, uh, off of a couple of card games is way more reasonable than getting poisoned in your, in your, at your dinner. I, I'm picturing Lucas just slowly backing out of the room with uh, like, his eyes going wide. <laughs> That's kind of where I was like, wait, wait, what are you suggesting? We still kill him and throw acid on his body? No, no, we have to we have to steal a corpse. As a decoy. The acid is to disguise the fact that the corpse isn't the person you were trying to kill. Is anyone else getting the sense that Alex just kind of wants to steal a corpse? Yes. This is uh, Flump Inc. Tagline, we're great at crime. Okay. <sighs> True. <laughs> Look, it's that. The, the way I see it, you have a couple of options. You can try and do something to not have to kill this person. You can try and, which would be, you know, involves either getting them, getting on the wrong side of Oswald or pissing him off. Or you can try and trick them into thinking you did it without murdering him. Or you can just murder him, but I agree that that seems a bit extreme. I don't see any options outside of those except maybe trying to negotiate, but I mean, does he work with the gentleman? Is he part of the crime syndicates? I don't even know. You're supposed I... to know this. He's your contact. I I drank his I drank his liquor and I threw his dice. Okay. I I played his card. Okay. Well, remind me next time I have somebody over for a friendly game of dice and liquor that I can apparently ask them to murder someone for me in cold blood. <laughs> I have to keep that one in mind. So, what's this? So, you're saying we steal a body out of a morgue? From the morgue, ideally, yeah. Mon that's not too rotten. I mean, there's not so, really a Dunfoss morgue. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, how do we. What, what would happen if a this? random. Like, what would happen if a beggar died on the street? Like, what happens to the body? Um, do I have to ask Seeker? Is this his area of expertise? If anything, they would probably carry him out of town. Mm -hmm. The corpse might be... I mean, if it was apparent what religion he belonged to, the body might be turned over to one temple or another for mm -hmm. proper funerary rites. It really depends on the body in question. If we're talking about like a typical middle-aged human, they would try to find out what temple to turn him over to, and if there isn't one, it's kind of up to the whims of the day. They might be taken out of town, might be burned is on that fire. The, is might that be the moss caps the job? The moss caps might be the first line of defense. They might not necessarily be the person making this decision, though. Okay. 
So if we do, if we go that route though, assuming we can get a body, how do we? Because like Oswald is going to expect this man to die in his in his premises. Oh, is that what's happening? I thought you were supposed to get him to. I thought you were supposed to like break into his house or something. No, this is going to happen in. This is supposed to happen in his premises. Oh. Um, I could mix up some sort of non-poison, like some some something to make him very sick, but that he doesn't die, and it looks like the poison failed. Maybe a weaker poison that just gives you, you know, that just causes you to vomit for a few days, pass out but not die. I mean, I guess the work question is, do we word Oswald's just going to shank him at that point? Yeah, that I'm worried about too. If we go that route. But I don't know. This is a this, this, this. record. You did it again. You, you managed to make me twist in the morality wind again. Why so how much did this, this guy steal? Wait. Okay. No, it's easy. He just disappears and never comes back, and then you never have the opportunity to poison him if he's supposed to be doing it in fifty-eight cards, right? Okay. So we just convince him to leave town without anyone knowing it was us. <laughs> Alright. Do you have any ideas for that? I mean, I have some magic at my disposal that might aid in that, but again, it would be very obvious of who's doing that in that case. You can't disguise yourself? Do I actually have access to that spell? Nope, do not have that spell to hand. Let's see here. I can only I can only disguise myself, and I don't exact. I'm not exactly as intimidating as you are. Uh, I don't know. Maybe Seeker or Florian knows some sort of illusion magic to make you look like someone else. Seems like something Seeker would be good at. Let's ask him. Seeker's got my... Oh, I'm not there. No, this is back at the barge. Yeah, maybe you are yeah. now. Now that yeah. we're opening it up. I mean, well, you're not having this conversation in front of everyone, right? <laughs> not until just now, is my understanding. Okay. Yeah. Well, Florian's spellbook is in the custody of, of Seeker at the moment, so... Maybe I Seeker's, do. Seeker's just been out back at the bar. Oh, wait, Seeker went off to check in. Yeah, I left it in your room. Dust. So if you go back to your bed, it's, it's sitting on top of and all, all of right. the pictures are colored in now. <laughs> all of the all of the O's, the center of them, are fell down. <laughs> Real talk, I do that on all of my D and D character sheets. All of them. <laughs> I fill in all the gaps. <laughs> so Seeker's not here. Uh, you said Florian. Yeah, Florian? see if Florian can do something. I can to make come you back. Look like I... Someone else. Yeah, I everybody can be at the bar for that. This can be before everybody breaks up for their evening actions. Is fine with okay. me. Everybody Gus is in jail. Jail. Yeah. When do we get him back? And Steaker just shrugs. So you're when telling me decides. you're telling me that you know trespassing on the king's grounds and potentially murder, I have a more structured material release program than beating some guy up in the street. What? Oh. Never mind. <laughs> I would like to suggest that we stop going to jail. It does not seem to be beneficial for our business endeavors. Well, yeah. See, that's what I said. And Gus said, oh, I don't want to lie. <laughs> well, there are I'm no lies. I'm not asking him to lie. I'm asking him to tell an alternate truth. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you, Florian. <laughs> So, uh, also, Lucius is looking for someone to make him look like someone else. Anybody okay. wizard? What? <laughs> Why would you want a wizard to do that? I mean, I can't you do it. Light up like a candle the first time try someone tries to figure out if you're in disguise. I can make you invisible. That's the extent of my illusion magic. Yeah, I Se can do that one. Seeker can also do that now. 
<laughs> are you saying we do? Are you saying we do? Um, seeing the, the mundane is the way to go. I yeah. I Wait, mean, yeah, Seeker, you're you can just disguise them, right? I mean, I don't know if you can disguise the horns. Yeah, I mean, it's like whispering in a crowded room. Disguising yourself with magic is what you do when you want people to know you're disguised. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I only have disguised self. I only have alter self. <laughs> <laughs> I... <laughs> yeah. Sorry. I'm okay, so what are we disguising? Who are we disguising? What's going on here? Yeah, what what what's going on? Why do you need what's, to disguise? What's the plan? It was not made clear to me. So the idea the, the, the thing is Lucius doesn't want to kill this man. Wait. At the same time. I'm sorry, back up yep. three or four steps. <laughs> You're committing murder why? At the behest of Oswald. It's six cards. Do you work for, for him how much now? gold? Is he a warlock? Is this warlock? I, I am. I am not sure where my life is right now. I'm just trying to get out from underneath this. I would like to once again reiterate that we should avoid going to jail because it is very and detrimental to our business. Alex fishes out the of his alchemy kit the vial that Lucius. Gave him, and it now has a small bit of parchment glued to it that says, do not drink. Do you... <laughs> do you owe Oswald money? No, I don't. We, we have money. So, no. so what's the... Okay. So you're, he wants you to kill this guy. Yes, because he's been, he's been fleecing, he's been fleecing his, his customers. You don't want to kill this Myself included. Guy. No, I don't. So my thought Tell was Oswald we you don't want to do it. And Oswald <laughs> wants it to be done in his place for some insane reason. That's so my thought like is Oswald's just... going to jail. <laughs> so my well no, I bet Oswald's probably got in good with some sort of moss caps, because remember what happened to Drudolf. My thought is we just chase this guy out of town before he even has a chance to go back to the inn. To the fifty six cards. Sounds good to me. We chase him about, you go back and you tell Oswald, Hey Oswald, I don't want to kill this guy. And then it never comes up again because the guy never shows up again. That sounds like a plan to me. Give him back his poison and tell him he should maybe stop telling random noble people he wants them to kill people. Tell him that seems like a good way to go to jail. <laughs> that is true. We don't actually owe any debt to Oswald anymore. Yeah. You could just turn him in. <laughs> I was wondering if anybody would suggest that. But then, we what happened? <laughs> what happens to his the criminal? The, what happens when the criminal associates of his that would have gotten Drudolf get wind that that we that I dined him out? Um, I don't know. Should we investigate Oswald's criminal network and figure out exactly what we'd have to do to put him away? Listen, I'm not a cop. I'm not getting paid to look into crimes that haven't happened yet. I'm just saying we run this guy out of town. Sounds like he stole a bunch of money from us. Yes. Yeah. That was my original idea. My original idea was that taking the law into your own hands is not poisoning someone to death for conning you out of a few gold pieces. We get our gold they pieces. They were gold back. and not silver, right? That's not exactly the best establishment. A little above. <sighs> it's definitely not worth it for silver pieces, for God's sake. Seeker just starts Ooh. laughing suddenly he's the one who took your ring <laughs> that's what this is oh thank you okay. seeker thank you for making me feel like the most foolish person on Wait, why don't thank we just you. go in it why makes don't we just feel go in? a lot better we find the guy's house we go in invisible we steal your ring we he spook doesn't. him out of the city and then we maybe throw Oswald out and replace him with an actual priest of... What was that god's name? Uh, excellent question. Uh, while Brickrow's looking that up, I would like to point out that uh, he did not get his ring. It was another random guy because he yeah. got oh, him. Okay. He, he tricked him into drinking his own stuff, and he he lost to that last game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So <clears throat> Oswald... I'm Oswald saying, has my you... ring, and so this is yeah, yeah. Okay. I had to I had to sort it out in my own brain. We, but yeah, Oswald we could has... get the church involved. 
Okay, so here's the way I see this. One, Oswald is a dangerous criminal who's getting people killed. However, he seems to only be going after people who deserve it so far. Uh, deserve it being in large quotes. I you. mean, I think Trudolph was already pretty borderline. Second part, which is, I don't want to be murdered. Again. <laughs> Oswald seems to be t paying people to kill people. Right. If we're taking out Oswald, we're taking him out for good. Are, are you sure you don't want to be murdered? Because, you know, your uh, your punch card is has got, like, three more. <laughs> and then you get, like, a free coffee? He's, like, stuffing donuts in his face. Like, I don't even like donuts that much. <laughs> <laughs> I'll stop chiming in. I'm in jail. So yeah, I think the way this goes is we get this guy out of town. If we can get some of ours back, fine. If we can't, fine. We chalk it up as a loss. Learning experience. After that, if we want to start looking into Oswald, see what the deal is with that, see if that's something that we need to solve, yeah, it's find someone to like pay it. us for it. I I'm, thinking the church. I'm thinking the church would pay us for it. So, as far as church is concerned, this is the only quote-unquote temple to Noribo in the city. Noribo mm -hmm. yeah. is a very minor god doesn't actually have like a major temple in or major presence in the city. Like let's get an actual priest of Naribo in here. I I don't know where in the world I'd have to go to find one. That sounds great. I'm all for looking into it. Let's do that on the DL so we don't get murdered. Right. First things first though, let's get this guy out of town. Everyone good on that? Right. Right. And my thought was if he could disguise himself you wouldn't necessarily know it was uh, Lucius who did it. Is this something you guys are doing tonight? Why does when do we Lucius get Gus need to back? disguise himself? No, Gus is Gus is gone. <laughs> Gus is going coming back at a later date. We don't know when it is. <laughs> okay, um, I guess he doesn't need to disguise himself as long as he's a hundred percent sure he can get the guy to leave town and never speak of it again. How much do you think the guy knows about poison? By the guy, Less do you me. mean Oswald, or do you mean Irving? Irving. Irving. Has, okay. has he shown you any reason to believe that he knows what a poison is? Lucius nods and says he he fed, he fed had something put in my drink that messed with my head, so chances are good that, yeah, he knows what he's doing. We tell him somebody hired us to take him out. We don't want to do it. We just want him to leave town. We show him the poison to prove that it's true. Either he leaves or he gets murdered. At that point, if... I feel like we've we've done our part. What if he figures out that it's Oswald who wants him killed? Then he goes after Oswald? How would he figure that out? I do not know, but it's... I mean, I think that's going to be the first suspect, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. I would think that the first suspect would be Lucius. Ugh. <laughs> uh. I, I'm picturing. Okay, I know I said I wouldn't chime in, but you know that that <laughs> meme where uh, the guy from uh, Hot Fuzz is like shame, and he's loading the shotgun. That's how I picture Seeker. It's like, well, we warned the guy. It's a shame he didn't. <laughs> but this Irving character sounds like something that someone that we must deal with now, and therefore we should go deal with him. I am less on board with dealing with Oswald though, because I'm not sure how he crossed us. Unless you care to expound on that further, Lucius. So my understanding no, I, is, I think until Oswald this is point, a mission at the moment. Let Berker... up to this point, my understanding is that Oswald has been a good friend. Of, well, uh, has always never been wrong by Lucius. Lucius is a frequenter yeah. of his establishment, and you all would know all of this because Lucius is down there drinking and gambling all the time. Hmm. As far as I'm aware, this is the first inkling any of you have got that Oswald <laughs> likes to kill people. Okay. Uh, no, there was that time that he had a guy. Good. Yeah, <laughs> there was that guy. He took a guy to torture him, and then he exploded into bugs. But unless Lucius has a different view of the situation, Oswald has not done anything to cross any of you yet. That's true. No. Yeah, that's why I'm not inclined to to bring the heat down on Oswald. So, okay. Okay. 
Like, I have no problem with thumping a guy's head, telling him, don't do it again. Getting the point across that way. That's what Gus tried to do. Now he's in jail. Yeah. But... Now, now, yeah. Yeah, no, that, that ship has sailed, so... <laughs> what, what were you saying, McDowell? I'm trying to figure out where Florian has fallen in all of this. <laughs> if he... <laughs> so I, I'm 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 kind of on board with Alexander's idea of finding out where this guy lives, getting to him before he goes to fifty six cards tonight, and well, that and, ship has already sailed. We're already up in the evening now. If he's out and about tonight, he would already be down at the place. Do you have some sort of time limit? Wasn't given one, but if he doesn't die tonight, then Oswald will likely know that something's up. Well, Oswald told Why? you it was at your discretion. Oh, I thought that. Okay, then. All right, then. Then what we what I what we do is I don't go to the fifty six cards tonight. We tail him home. And, and lay it to him straight. What's of what of what's going down? Okay, is that agreeable? Is that what we're all doing? Yes, that's yeah. fine with me. That sounds fine to me. Let's get a an investigation check from one of you. I'll let you guys decide. I can take um, it if you guys want. Do you want sure. a cigarette? Yeah, give me a cigarette. I have I've had told Windows not to update twice on my laptop since we started playing. It's really getting uppity about. It's like, man, this update's so great though. I want to go get it. I want to get mine. That's a nineteen. Okay. Irving Irving is indeed at fifty six cards tonight and seems to have done fairly well. And you do manage to. Uh, well, how are you going about finding out where he is? You're going to tail him after he leaves. Yeah. Okay. Uh, near to the six branches, which is Surefoot's tenement block here. Near to this area, there's a couple of other larger buildings that aren't part of the tenement block proper and are not owned by Surefoot, but they're kind of like halfway house situations. They're kind of like flop house kind of thing where the kind of place where you pay your rent daily. Uh, and that's where Irving Irving goes back to. He goes into one of these seedy little joints. Uh, you see him head, kind of rap on the front door for a moment, have words with somebody on the other side of the door, exchange something through the door. The door then closes, and he goes around the back, up a set of stairs, up to a second floor door, uh, and disappear into it. This would be well late into the night. Midnight or later at this point. Okay. I think what I do is I... Is I can fly up to the roof and see if there's a way in from the roof. Ah, uh, there's a chimney. Hmm. You could probably squeeze down it if it's not blocked from the inside somehow. Currently no smoke emanating from it. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do, is I'm, I'm going to cast Fly, I'm going to go up there, and then I'm going to try and shimmy down that chimney. What about the other three of you? Uh, before he goes in there, are you hoping to get in when this guy's still awake? Or yeah. are you hoping to... Okay. Um, I heard that there were other people in that building that he was talking to. I want to know where they are so they don't intrude on the, uh, on the fun here. Seeker, make, a, make an intelligence check. That's a nine. A nine? Without actually going inside, you could only speculate as to what the inner layout of the place would look like on the upstairs so what, or the downstairs. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cast Detect Thoughts. Okay. 
And I'm using the last part of the spell here, uh, the second to last paragraph. You can also use the spell to detect the presence of thinking creatures you can't see. When you cast the spell or as your action during the duration, you can search for thoughts within 30 feet of you. The spell can par penetrate barriers, but two feet of rock, two inches of any metal other than lead, or a thin sheet of lead blocks you. None of which is going to come into play around these wooden buildings. Uh, probably half of a dozen thinking creatures would be inside this building. Most of them are down on the bottom floor. Two or three of them on the top floor, separated by some number of feet. And only one on the other side of the door that you saw Irving Irving go into. Then while, uh... While Lucius makes his play, I'm going to try to monitor the minds below him and uh, try to grab some surface thoughts, see if any of them start thinking, oh, I need to head upstairs. Surface thoughts. Two very interesting hits happen here. The first is the surface thoughts of who you have to imagine is Irving Irving. And the surface thoughts are he's very pleased with his take tonight. And he's can't believe he's gotten away with this level of chicanery for this long. This Oswald guy has got to be some kind of prick. Yeah. Taking him for a ride. <laughs> the other surface thoughts are some kind some person this would be in an upstairs room but would be accessible either from inside the building itself or from another staircase on the other side you haven't been around to see yet you're not sure okay but somebody up on the second floor agony agonizing over a decision the decision you don't know what the decision is without going deeper but one way he's thinking leads to certain death while the other way uh leads to great potential riches but also great potential risk he has to make this decision tonight and he's agonizing over it okay uh that guy sounds like he's someone to look into uh, I'm going to try to figure out where exactly he's in the building by having my familiar scout the area above me. What the fuck is your familiar doing tonight? <laughs> my familiar is going to be uh, just, for the moment, just trying to find, like, you said it might he might have gotten there through a like, staircase or like through a window or something like that, but I haven't like examined the area well yet. He's mm -hmm. going to be looking for that. Well, right, but what form is your familiar taking? Oh, my familiar, until I change him, is still in the form of a trestle. Okay, and what are... What's Florian and Alex's role in this situation? I mean, right now, Alex is hanging back and making sure nobody needs support. Okay, and what about Florian? That sounds like a perfect thing to do. Okay. Florian was also doing that. Give me an investigation check from the Tresson. Okay. Does Tresson want a cigarette? <laughs> I'm going to say the Tresson can't smoke. Okay. <laughs> I don't... I don't think Tresums have the proper lips for that. I don't Can know. the badger smoke? I've seen chimpanzees <laughs> smoke. I gotta know if the if the badger can smoke. So the Tresum probably could smoke, but he can detect poison. He's he wants nothing to do well, with it. Anything uh... anything can smoke if you light them on fire. Yeah. He detects <laughs> the poison coming from that cigarette. It's a touch sure. range spell. This to is the Tresum in uh in what you call it, in uh Descent and Avernus. It's a what? Is that the is that his, Tresum's investigation, that too? Yeah, the Tresum rolled real poor, poorly. So that's a three. Three? It yeah. looks like there's two entrances into the building. The one downstairs, and then the yeah. one that Irving Irving went up. More information than that, you don't glean. There are windows on the other side of the buildings in various states of being boarded up. Uh, yeah. On both the ground floor and the second floor. And there's two chimneys on the roof. But beyond that... That's all I get. Uh, are the chim the chimneys aren't like lit or anything, right? Like he is very good at senses of smell. There's no smoke so coming that... out of the chimneys. Okay, yeah. So that's gonna leave us with Lucius. It's all you, Lucius. 
So I'm gonna try and shimmy in to uh, the second floor. So first of all, are you visible? Uh, y- yes, I am. Unless okay. someone else wants to help with that. Do you want an invisibility? Yes, I do. All right. Uh, Alex pulls two pinches of different types of dust out of his alchemist kit, sprinkles them over you, as and as they combine, you turn invisible. All right, Lucius. Yes. Give me a stealth check at advantage. Okay. Oh, I didn't pull out three dice. I'm going to pull out two. That is a sixteen. So, a little thing about Typhlings is they're all double jointed and contortionists. But you squeeze down through this chimney. And not much of a hearth to speak of, but it, it does open up into what looks like could be the largest of what at one point might have been uh, an inn or an upstairs suite or something. There is another door opposite on the other side of the room that might open up out into another area on the upper floor, but it's it's boarded over uh, from this side. It's not not openable. And okay. very little in the way of personal effects in the room. It's a large and drafty room, and there's a large circular rug laying on the floor. Uh, the only light in the room is coming from a small counting table that Irving Irving is sitting at. He's got an oil lantern turned down low, just enough to give him a glow so he can count his winnings. And he seems to be sitting there having a nightcap for himself in a chair that looks rather out of place in this room. Very... Uh, A leather-bound, very comfortable-looking chair with big, comfy, cushiony armrests. And he's kind of half-sitting, half-reclined in this chair, just kind of dozing off in the haze of his cigar. And you squeeze into the room, and he does not know you're there. Uh, I'm going to lean... You said said he's working over some kind of uh, of ledger, you said? You can't see, because the back of the chair is in the way. You'd have to circle I'm gonna, around. Yeah, I'm going to creep closer so I can get a look over his shoulder. So, no, he doesn't have a ledger or anything on the table. What he has are very neatly piled stacks of coins. Silver, gold, and platinum. Mostly gold, but no small amount of silver and at least a good handful or two of platinum. And he's just in his chair. His eyes are half closed. He's kind of murmuring to himself. A half drunk uh, cup of some kind of liquor is sitting in front of him on the table. I am going to cast the darkness spell around myself and him. Okay. I need to. So, invisibility is concentration. Is darkness a concentration spell? Uh, do you know that invisibility is from another source? It is. You do know that any spell you cast ends invisibility, though, right? That's perfectly fine. Okay. Oh, you're not concentrating on invisibility anyway. That's right. Uh, Yeah. But it will break your invisibility. That's fine. Okay. Let me. And you're able to see in magical darkness because you're crazy warlock. I am. Yeah, I am. So you fill the room with this magical darkness. Uh, Does that require a verbal component? It does. Uh, Yeah. So hearing the muttering of the verbal components, I mean, he kind of starts awake a little bit and start, starts looking around. And you can see that he's, he, he realizes that he's been blinded. And he shoves the cigar and puts it out by pressing it into the desk. And he, he's glancing can I, around. Hello. Can I, snatch, can I snatch the cigar out of his hand when he uh, tries to put it out? Make a dex check. Don't have to roll particularly high. Uh, nine. You can roll added damage because he's blind and you're oh, not. Nine. <laughs> nine. So you don't manage to snatch the cigar out of his hand, but as he's motioning forward to kind of put on the desk, you do kind of swat at his hand. And it knocks the cigar across the room and skitters on the floor and it startles him. And he jumps up to his feet, snatching this way and that. And he calls out, who goes there? What's happening? I have one very simple message for you. Are you speaking in your own voice or are you disguising your voice somehow? I'm speaking in my own voice. Okay. (laughs) 
And I'm I'm, I'm saying I I I have, I have, a, I have a very simple and uh, message for you regarding why I'm here tonight. Oswald is has sent me here to kill you. And at that, he stumbles over backwards, tripping on the chair, away, trying to get away from you. And he stumbles and hits the floor. And he looks oh, pretty well terrified. Something. What's your spell casting? It's charisma, right? Yeah. Make a charisma intimidation check. Come on, die. 20. He stammers out about something of... He hasn't... He hasn't stolen from Oswald or uh, it, directly or in any way. Oswald has no, no reason but, to. You no, interrupt but him. You, what you have done, but what you have done is you have stolen from that which provides him his livelihood, his customers, of which I am one. So what, what? What is he paying you? I'll pay you more. It's not about the money for me. But I, and he starts weeping what, what, when you tell him it's not about the money, like a man already dead. I want you to leave this city, and I want you to never return. So you're not going to kill me, then? It's not in my heart. And he starts... I'm not a, I'm not a villain. He starts shaking his head back and forth, and he he clasps his, his hands together. It's, what, your name? Well, what is your name? I have to know who I, to whom I owe my life. Drop the darkness spell and give a little give a give a little swaggery bow, Lucius Yudok. And then you see the terror subside a little bit. And he leans forward. Lucius Yudok. I, I All this over what, what did I take from you? Ten gold, twelve gold? It's not just about me, as I said about the other customers you've swindled over the t- over the uh, time that you've been there. Hey, he he looks more embarrassed than anything, and he starts to regain his composure and he stands up. And you can see what's starting to, what's your what's your passive insight? I'll ask that. This is my favorite question in this campaign. Nine. <laughs> he stands up and says, I'm sure I can come to some arrangement with with Oswald. I'm sure a, a number can be reached. One thing that you know about Oswald, having gambled there quite a lot, is Oswald does take pride in that the games at his place are always known to be fair. Mm-hmm. And Lucius will say that and say Oswald maintains fair games. He doesn't. He doesn't swindle. He doesn't cheat. And this is what you've done. I'll cut him in. I can change his mind. There's no need for, no need for all the theatrics. After just a few days of you doing this, he he sent me after you with a vial containing two drops of a very viru- virulent poison. If my friend is to be believed. And I have no reason to doubt him. He's an alchemist of uh, no small of no small skill. If I don't leave, you'll kill me. No, but I imagine that you will be less than welcome at fifty six cards, and will likely find your way in some other find your end in some other distasteful fashion. He sees me very conflicted, thinking back and forth on this, because on one hand. This might be the most pants peeing experience that he's had in recent years. On the other hand, I mean, you're just Lucius Udock. You're just the easy mark that he took money from. It does all seem to be a little much. What I've demonstrated here is only a fraction of what I'm capable of. Make a... Either charisma intimidation or charisma deception, depending on what Lucius means by that. Do 
Deception. That's Deception. a 25. <laughs> 25? You see the little bit of uh, defiance sour in his face. Suppose what they say about you is true, isn't it? Your tails connect you to hell. That's the... That's the, uh, that's the prevailing rumor in Romneus, yes. And he, he, I don't put any stock into it. So at this point, you're standing between him and his money. Yeah. Is that deliberate? Yes. And you can see his eyes constantly darting to the money, to your face, to your tail, to the money... Anything else you're gonna do to push this guy's buttons before he does what he's gonna uh, do? No. What's he what's he gonna do? At this, he says bollocks to this, and he snatches his hat up off of the bed, which is near to the door, pulls it onto his head, backs over to the door. And just before he leaves, he says, you and Oswald. I'll have mine in the end. You see if I don't. Then he leaves the room and slams the door. So those of you out on the street, after Lucius squeezes into the chimney, about four or five minutes pass before you see the door open and Irving Irving come. He takes the stairs two at a time, coming down out into the street and then disappearing deeper into the shallows. Leaving Lucius alone in the room with all this money. I'm going to scoop it up okay. and then climb out the chimney. There is 50 pieces of silver, mm-hmm. 230 pieces of gold, and 16 platinum coins. 16, 230, so 16 platinum, 230 gold F- 50 silver, 230 gold, 16 okay. platinum. Here's the tricky that. bit. Gaming at the 56 cards, Oswald does not deal in platinum. This man has 16 platinum coins, but he did not win them at the 56 cards. That's That much is certain. It's possible he's been taking his winnings and turning them over at a money lenders or accounting house or something. But those kind of businesses aren't really pervasive in the shallows. Mm-hmm. But you can go ahead and add that to your riches. Okay. And that's going to do it for the night. I did. We do have to end a little bit early tonight. But I would like to uh, sentence Gus. Huh? Before we before we break. <laughs> <laughs> so Gus, here's the thing: the bartender in the place where you started this fight that was all your fault knows that you're a regular. Knows you didn't start the fight. Vouched for you. Caitlin Chubb, you don't know what she said outside of uh, that she sponsored you to join the Cobblestone Wizards. Outside of that, the jailer at the tower where you were brought speaks very highly of you. A model (laughs) prisoner. He thinks you were shanghai So. Two days, both you and the big man you were fighting. Two days... In the stocks. In the Great Tables Park. Okay. Two days of public humiliation to teach you guys to keep it in your pants when you're inside the walls. I guess you weren't. You were out in Wharf Town. But nonetheless, whoever the aggressor was, whoever started the fight, Whoever was throwing the spells, whoever drew the, their blade first, both of you had a hand in breaking the king's peace. So during the day, you're going to be in the stocks and kids can come by and pee on you and whip tomatoes at you. And at night, you'll be led back to a, a cell in Great Tables Park. Do you say anything about this or do you just accept the... Sentencing. I'll accept it. It's fine. Okay. 
Doesn't bother Gus none. Is this Gus's first time being put up in stocks? Probably not. Probably <laughs> here, but probably not. <laughs> All right. So when we reconvene next week, we'll bring it up on the morning of the 23rd. Uh, so nobody had a chance to go with the riddle book tonight because everybody was helping with the Lucius situation. I apologize for stealing the spotlight and it's taken away from that. Mm, tabletop just broke entirely. That's nice. Oh, oh no. Oh, I assumed you closed the table. I assumed you closed the table, too. No. <laughs> Can we give Scrappy a sign around his neck and have him sell tomatoes? <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. I don't think he, yeah, no, we can do that. He's got a pack saddle. Gus would be very imp- he would be upset with you, but also low key impressed if you managed to make money off of like selling tomatoes to throw at him. <laughs> anyway, I don't have to count up any experience tonight because we didn't do any combat. I mean, Gus did a little bit of combat, but that doesn't count. He, did, he didn't kill anyone. He didn't kill anybody. Just, uh, man, so murder is not the solution in that situation. And Lucius no, but it is an too- experience. <laughs> yeah. Lucius took that to heart. He didn't murder tonight. But, I was trying to get Florian to a point where he was like, you know what? Murder's fine. I never got there. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? F him. <laughs> I feel like Killian and Adrex both got to that point a couple times. Like, Killian started there. <laughs> that was Killian's base level. Like, <laughs> Would you like a lollipop? I'd like to kill you instead. Okay. <laughs> so let me set up a straw poll here while you guys think about it. Actually, it would be some blips. Hold I'd apply prefer it. a bolt on your neck. So I'll be back in two minutes, and we'll do some blips, and that'll be it. Do some blips. Uh, so who was the most creative? I don't know if it was creative or if it was intangible, but just Alex talking about, oh, we gotta get a dead body from the morgue. Duh. <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> like, this is how we're gonna solve this. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'd be comfortable with that giving either one of those. <laughs> uh, I've got right. an idea for intangible, so if you want to use that for creative. <laughs> well, right. well, that's creative, for sure. That's Certainly creative. <laughs> Badass. Listen. Yeah. I know you want it. I don't. I. I don't. I wasn't trying to start a bar fight. I was <laughs> trying to just buy time for Destel to finish his little NPC list. And how did that work out for you? I ended up in prison. <laughs> and now I'm going to have small children throw tomatoes at me for two days. So you want but, party goals? Uh, <laughs> I honestly uh, want to give badass to Lucius for the scary Batman thing that he completely ruined by just dropping it at the at the last minute. <laughs> I was like, no, I'm sitting there screaming, no, don't do it. Don't. Don't just no. <laughs> Lucius is a soft boy. I don't know what you're talking. I don't know what your problem is. I, I I will give it to Lucius as long as he never ever refers to himself again as a soft boy. <laughs> <laughs> too bad that po- too bad that that poor innocent woman didn't get soft boy Lucius. <laughs> That wasn't an invitation for the rest of you to do it. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Who furthered the party's goals today? Uh, uh, Alexander for actually doing investigative work while the rest of us went to prison, committed uh, uh, planned a murder. Definitely did not 
commit or plan a murder. Well, Alex got it for the other one. Yeah. Okay. Uh... Or do you have a different one for creative? Oh, oh, no. Okay. Seeker then for coming and trying to talk Gus into, you know, doing things politically. I don't know. I got nothing. You had something just... for intangible, Alex? Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> next time next time you die, I'm going to dump you into the ocean. To quote <laughs> Gus. <laughs> Sorry, I just thought that, that was worth a blip. No, it was good. All yeah, right. No, right. Who wants some blips? Gus doesn't get any because he's in jail. That's oh. the rule. You go to jail, you get zero blips. That's definitely not true. What if he rolls double? What if he rolls doubles? We've been in enough jails. I'm just surprised it took this long for one of us to be arrested by the Moss Caps. (laughs) So who wants to go first? Uh, You know what? I'll go first. Oh, Gus, what could Uh, you possibly have? (laughs) All right. uh, Neutral good. I must be a... uh, Benefactor and strive to leave things in a better state than I found it. For, I mean, going along with the moss caps, not resisting them, like they're just doing their jobs. I put my weapon down, even though that guy took a cheap shot from me, at me. Yeah, that guy's a dick. Uh, ideals. My companions are my support structure, and I must do what I can to protect them from themselves and others. And the reason, like, willing, to, I was willing to go to prison, just like straight up, whatever. It's it's not worth it. I don't know what you're going to do with this information. You could hurt somebody with it. Mm-hmm. Uh, sorry. No no sale. I'm sorry. Goodbye. And I guess Drunk Gus says hello because, like, again, I was t- I was literally just trying to buy 30 seconds, like a couple of minutes. <laughs> just trying to buy a couple of minutes. Like, hey, what's the general What's the general feel of the population on 10 cells? <laughs> if it makes you feel better, <laughs> I had this encounter <laughs> planned anyway, and you just gave me the opportunity to accelerate it a little bit. I mean, so, like, this was gonna happen, and probably to Gus, let's be honest. <laughs> You're just like, here, let me open this door real quick. And then and then I made things worse by when they, instead of de-esca- uh, I, I, let's just say that Gus doesn't, is not good at de-escalation. He is, that's not his job. He's not <laughs> there to de-escalate, he's not there to de-escalate confrontations. He's he, there he's to pull out escalator. his hand. He's, t- he's there to hit people with his hammer. Mm-hmm. Is that anyone's job in Funfink to de-escalate? Uh, Seeker and probably Seeker? Alex? Sometimes. I mean, it would depend on the confrontation. <laughs> okay, he suggested getting a dead body from the morgue. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with, like, how is that escalating a conflict? <laughs> Anything else for Gus? Uh, the video. Okay, and who wants to go next? Florian will go. I'll go. Florian. I uh, only got the one. There's always an explanation, and we must always consider it for sticking up for Seeker, suggesting that, yes, Gus absolutely should have lied, because that is just his version of the truth. Okay. That's it. And who's next? Lucius? I can go. I heard Lucius before. Okay. I have uh, my alignment lawful neutral take a place in society, work well for your fellow people, take care of your own. Lucius is willing to do a lot of things, but murder is not one of them. Mm-hmm. And so he's kind of like, nope, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna poison this guy. Sorry, buddy. That's so to happen. very different than from the Bows and Bob situation. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, well, that I mean... red and birdie. <laughs> okay. Anything else? Um. Let's see, I have a. Uh... Uh, double or nothing for going in that thing pretty much solo. Going into, going into the into the room with that guy pretty much solo. I mean, you did have invisibility cast on you. I did, but then I but then I just kind of just like eh, I'll just drop it now. It's fine. And I, I I I I think I handled that pretty well in my own. Anything she else? was almost cool. That's what it. Is, that's all I got. Alexander, what you got for me? 
Alright, so I have my alignment, lawful neutral, always being willing to take the law into your own hands, but no further for his willingness to uh, try and find a appropriate way to deal with this guy, uh, fleecing people rather than murdering him. Mm -hmm. And, uh, Flaw, I'm sure we can handle this for his plan to just just get a random dead body and scar it with acid so they think you killed him. <laughs> Is that it? Yeah. And what about Seeker? Alright, I've got Chaotic Good. Good is only taken from those that can afford it. Chaos is taking them for all they're worth. For saying, okay, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna run this guy out of town, and we're gonna take back our money from him. Not just running him out of town. If we're gonna do something involving this guy, we're gonna get back Lucius's money. Okay. Uh, opportunity is everywhere, if you can see it. For saying when, oh, if we should, if we're gonna have to deal with Oswald, saying like, no, okay, listen, first things first with Oswald. If we're going to take out Oswald, we're going to find someone to pay for it. <laughs> and third, anybody can be fooled, except for me, for going in and desperately, desperately trying to convince Gus to tell an alternate truth. Oh, Listen, why? you don't have to mean it. Just say this, please. With all respect to Seeker and Florian, an alternate truth is a lie. Yes. <laughs> and I, an for alternate one... alternate truth is something I... that would get through a truth-telling spell. I, for one respects Gus's completely ineffective uh, adherence to the truth. I am tempted to change Florian's flaw to there's no such thing as a lie. <laughs> <laughs> if you do it, I'm doing it. <laughs> no such thing as a lie. <laughs> and then somebody shows up and is like, what about this cake? Just the alternate... <laughs> News. Who had the most Alternate. creative solution to a problem this session? That was Alex. We gave it to Alex for proposing the <laughs> stealing a dead body. <laughs> that was definitely creative. I can't not laugh and say it because I love it. So much. Well, I just I misunderstood the context in which she was to die. Okay. <laughs> yes, uh, acid. Like acid, you're answer to everything and it's getting to be a problem i mean <laughs> when all you have is a hammer <laughs> you pour acid on that hammer. right you when pour you acid have nothing but hammer. you have the ability to create a hammer <laughs> like we how is mayonnaise going to solve this problem that's all i'm gonna ask choke him to death i don't know who furthered the party's goals the most i think that was seeker did we say Seeker for that? For trying to convince Gus to, like, go along with the party line? I don't remember. And, and for bribing yeah. a guard. Yeah. Oh, bribing a guard, yeah. For bribing that guard with three pieces of gold did a lot of work. <laughs> three pieces of gold, that guard's willing to go to the mattress for you. Uh, who was the badass? Uh, Lucius. I, I, I'm going to say Lucius because... He did the thing. He went in there. He was menacing. He was, uh, he was, on point. And uh, unfortunately, though, at the end, he did kind of drop it and show that he was Lucius. But the, up until that point, man, a plus and a better result than ending up in prison. So I can't give it to myself. <laughs> We're okay with Lucius Going there. To prison, yeah. And what about intangibles this week? Uh, oh, we're giving it to Gus for next time you die. I'm going to dump you in the ocean. <laughs> and Gus also has our straw poll this week. So, uh, Gus, you're the only one who spent blips this week. Yes, I have four currently. So, Alex, you're rolling over three. We're level five, yes. So yes. blips are worth two hundred and fifty. So, Alex, okay. you roll. You have to roll over three. Mm -hmm. Florian, you have to roll over one. Mm. Lucius, you have to roll over three. Seeker has to roll over four. And Gus, you earned six. And you have four. Are we going in next week with six? No, but I have to do math. Okay. How so much I, are they each worth, did you say? 250. 250. All I'd like I'm, to know is how much we're going into next week with, so I can have my Oh, uh, all six, I can't cash mine in. Okay. I am going in with... 
Five. With fives? Mm -hmm. So I'm cashing in five. Okay. Is everybody else going in with six? Yep. Yes. And All I right. am now level six. Gus made it to level six first. It's a tie. Nice. Oh, you also made level six? Yeah. Coming across that. Yeah, but within lizards don't get anything at level six. Hopefully they get more hit points. I don't think wizards get hit points. No, that's true. <laughs> they get one hit point. It's just... I get my divination BS, but I, I can't have fun with that until I get scry. <laughs> All right. So sorry we have to have to end a little bit early this week. But when we pick it up next week, we will pick it up with I'm thinking we should LARP it and actually have Treble build some stocks. He lives <laughs> he's got like a lot of land out there. Just put some together. We'll set up a webcam. You can make it out of keyboards. We'll see if we can set up a device where like you can come onto Twitch and donate two dollars and then the device flings a tomato at him. Mm. I mean, if you put that on Twitter, you might make some money. <laughs> like two dollars to throw a throw a tomato at this man. <laughs> All right, thanks for playing.